So uh, recently we have seen uh, great advances, advantages, advantages on a lot of uh, uh, AI areas like NLP, uh, computer vision, robotics, recommended systems, and AI for science. Okay. So, so I hope to point out that uh, 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 complexity and the strengths are actually two orthogonal concepts to consider in explainable AI, actually explainable recommendation, because which means that uh, uh, simple explanations may not be weak and the complex explanations may not be strong. Sometimes maybe there's a very complex explanation, but this explanation possibly it could be weak. So among all of these four dimensions, of course, we first hope to extract those strong recommendations, right? We hope to make sure that our explanation can really kick out the recommendation from the top K recommendation list so that the explanation is strong. And among the, for, for strong explanations, there could be simple and strong explanations as well as complex and strong explanations. Among these two types of explanations, we hope to find those simple and uh, strong explanations because this can better help cognitively easier for users to understand uh, uh, in terms of uh, um, explained recommendation. <clears throat> so because of this, we can formulate, formulate the explanation learning into this constrained learning framework, which is to minimize the explanation complexity and constraint on that the explanation is strong enough. Based on the definition of uh, explanation complexity and explanation strengths, we can simply use this optimization, constraint optimization framework to generate uh, explanations. So this framework is actually very general. It's not only applicable for recommended systems, but also applicable for other domains like uh, graph neural networks and the vision explanations and the natural language explanations we're going to talk about uh, later. So uh, for, uh, for optimization learning, we can easily uh, uh, reformulate this as a uh, uh, relaxed optimization framework based on simply uh, language multiplier. So another problem we have to consider usually in explainable AI is that how do we evaluate explanations? This is a very challenging problem actually, especially for explainable AI. In other standard, more standard AI tasks like classification, usually we have the ground truth so that we can easily evaluate the performance using, for example, precision recall and, and F measure. But uh, in explainable AI, in most of the problems, scenarios, we do not have ground truth explanations. So it's very difficult to us to, to evaluate the explanations. So based on the counterfactual reasoning and explanation framework, uh, we also try to propose some uh, easily usable evaluation metrics for explanation, which is to evaluate the sufficiency and the necessity of the explanations. So uh, to better understand the concept of sufficiency and the necessity, uh, maybe let me remind you of this very simple high school level definition of uh, sufficiency and the necessity. If we have a condition S and a condition N, if we know that uh, if S happens, then N will happen, then we see that S is a sufficient condition for N. And also we have the equivalent contrapositive, right? Not N to not S, which means that if n does not happen, then s will not happen. So because of this, we say that n is a sufficient condition for s. We can just borrow these very fundamental high school level concepts to define the, some evaluation metrics. Uh, one is probability of necessity and another is probability of sufficiency. Probability, probability of necessity tries to evaluate that uh, if imagine that in a counterfactual world, that the aspects in our explanation did not exist in the system, then what is the probability that uh, the atom would not be recommended? So this is actually the idea of sufficient uh, necessity, right? which means that the aspects in our explanation is necessary because if these aspects didn't exist, then this atom would not be recommended. So it's necessary. <clears throat> 